Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadij. Today is a better day. I still can't believe that my brother has been killed. It's even hard for me to say the word, my brother has been killed. It's, it's very, extremely difficult, you know. And y'all wonder why I spend so much time talking about the damage that we do in this community to one another. We talk about how the police departments who have evolved from the slave catchers uh, torture us and maim us and beat us and kill us and it is very disheartening to be standing on that same side talking about the same subject but all the players are black people it is amazing to me that we the people who are so religious who are so um, so-called God-fearing people that I, I don't see no society or no dominant culture or any culture that receives as much pain and inflicts as much pain on one another as we do for all our love of God. It's like almost we can't have it both ways. Either we are the people of God or we'll be straight up become the children of Satan. Because now we eat ourselves, we fight ourselves. It's just like the experiment with the rats in the cage, in the box, that they began to eat one another because they were so crowded in the box. They ate each other. They fought constantly. And then as soon as you removed them from the box, gave them more space, gave them open space, they continued with that same behavior, eating on one another, biting on one another, because they had begun to be poisonous. And that's why I say about some of the people in our community, they're poison. And what they give a damn about doing to you or your family or member or somebody you love ain't nothing. Nothing. It has no bearing on anything they're trying to do, especially if they're a fiend, a fiend of any sort. Oh, we are very devastated over here because Rick was our prince. He was our fun guy. <laughs> And just to think that that's not going to be anymore in this lifetime, it's just a hurtful thing. And uh, again, I don't wish this on nobody's family member. But given the statistics, it's a whole lot of us going through this right now and feel the way I feel today in a community right where they are. Because they've been shot down by another black man or stabbed by a black woman or it, it doesn't matter. The behavior is the same. And just to give you an example of how this is a deja vu for me. This is really, really 
a scary thing for me because it is hitting home. And the reason, you guys, I feel like I'm living a little deja vu is I want to share an article with you that I had published in the journal Sentinel, I believe. Um, and it was in lieu of a woman's son being accused of first-degree murder of a friend of mine's uncle. Okay? And it was very devastating because what had happened in the community was since the jury, or not the jury, um, what is it when you have a like a preliminary or something? I don't know what it was. Well, what happened was it started. The consensus started to be in the community was that this young man was being treated unfairly, and, and that he was a victim as opposed to the perpetrator. The tables we was beginning to turn. That sent the sentiment was he was the one that should have garnered the sympathy as opposed to the person that was killed. And at that point, I just couldn't take anymore. I was like, this has gone too far. And y'all get mad at me because I say, let's talk about it. And y'all don't understand why I call this the mental house. Because we are so damn dysfunctional in this community. We are so dysfunctional in this community that it's, it's impossible. It is impossible almost to be redeemed in it. That's why I encourage everybody to take a trip to the motherland. I encourage everybody to get up out of America for a minute. Especially when you can get around some, uh, of some spaces where you can be able to reflect on just how damaged you are living in these communities. Like I told you before, this is my third family member that has been murdered. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? My third family member. That's rather unusual, wouldn't you say? Nope. Some, some people got more than me. Okay. And most of it is through violence. If it's not drug use, it's through violence. I know a woman that had four, four family members OD. Look at this madness. Okay, so... Then you add that to me just being on here a couple weeks ago and telling you that I know that I have a niece who is a victim of child trafficking who've been pistol whipped and picked up and transported throughout this United States by some young man years older than her. A lot of that goes on in Milwaukee. Milwaukee is a high uh, uh, has a high traffic rate for um, uh, uh, I mean has a high I'm sorry, a high rate for child trafficking is what I meant to say. So we're dealing with violations of the human family on the highest level. On the highest level. How can you function? Are we well? Are we well? I contend, no, we not. No, we're freaking not. I'm going to read again this article that was published. And this could be just very well my brother's story so far. And I'm going to share it with y'all. So, as I gave you the backdrop, the woman started an organization, and, and it was a, a, you know, I'm not going I'm to, I'm objective enough to know that's good that you have an organization, a nice Christian organization, and you started after your son was accused of murder. 
However, forgiveness is a process for most sane and rational people. I mean, in my opinion. Uh, and so, my the letter to the editor was what I felt about the whole situation at large. The, 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 the empathy coming from the community who, in my opinion, seemed to be giving this murderer a pass. Because when they, sometimes when you mention drugs, everybody want to just say, oh, 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 hope you get better. Oh, get well, get well. Never mind the victim. And it's time out for that. And I think this letter kind of addressed that. It says, in regards to a mother's calling, it was a well-written article, because that was the name of the article that was making these excuses. It was a well-written article in terms of the positiveness of Mrs. Walker's newly formed organization. But in terms of, of objective journalism, it failed the community completely. In fact, we believe you have been overtly misled. Mr. Swoops, maybe for the past few months, you should have been locked up with the incarcerated, I mean, you should have been locked up and incarcerated and living in the same quarters with the Sneed family during their days, their trying days. In wake of so much violence in our that is perpetrated in our community against one another, it truly crushed me that one black man, the deceased, a highly sought off there, educated electrician, and the other was a street cocaine abuser, or as said on the street, a crackhead, that you try to impose on our minds that the judicial system had destroyed uh, Chris's life. Well, when in actuality, his crack addiction is what destroyed him. Hey, what is that? Oh my goodness, excuse me. Sorry about that, they was running amok. Being a mother, I felt the pain for Mrs. Walker. But I cannot begin to feel the pain of Mrs. Sneed. A hard-working African-American woman who was very proud of her son's accomplishments, as well as others who knew him. Life behind bars is no way pleasurable experience for anyone, but neither is the aftermath of having to bury your child who was murdered, especially by the hands of another black man. Apparently, you did not attend all of the trial, or you were biased in your opinion because the evidence of what happened um, at this particular address, all, uh, but all contradicted this young man's plea for self-defense. We as African Americans need to stop blaming the white man for all of our ills and start taking responsibility for ourselves. Calling Christopher's act of murder, then stealing from the corpse, lying before was his choice, and allowing the substance of crack to rule his actions that night was also his choice. How he feels and responds now, after the fact, are really no concern of mine. Now it's between him and the creator of all life. His responsibility as a human being is now to tell others about the perils of drug use and how it destroys one life now that he is no longer under its deadly influence. Again, our prayers go out to that family uh, and her family as we have told her during this emotionally draining period for both of our families. Sentiments should not be ignored though for another family. And this is what you did Mr. Swoop in your article. Justice was served whether the jury was all white or any other ethnic group. Crack destroys lives and it destroyed Christopher's. In reference to Mrs. Walker's newly formed organization, we feel it would be beneficial to the African American community uh, to incorporate a supportive group that deals with specifically children's lives 
that are being destroyed by crack and other drugs. I meant every word of it then. And that article was written in, I believe, 1994. And I believe every bit of it right now, today. I'm tired of losing people to bullcrap. I'm tired of watching us kill each other and self-destruct. I'm just tired. For those of y'all who continue to um, contact me about my brother his case is still under investigation. I don't know very much. And when I find out, it'll be public record. And of course, I'll share it. Because that's the way they do stuff. Um, I am honoring all COVID protocols. So it's very important that we do things in decency and in order. And I know that people are hurt. We're all devastated by what has happened. But there's certain rules and, and, and regulations that we would love for the people to honor for us over here. And that is to uh, remember that there is a protocol. Remember that there's some information that I'm withholding from certain family members. Remember, you don't need to uh, keep contacting me and I don't know anything. When I get ready to talk, I will talk to you. That's me. I'm not talking about any other of my siblings. I'm talking specifically for me. Because at some point, people have to understand that people need their privacy. And they need to leave them alone. And give them that respect that they will want for themselves. And you don't have the right to infringe upon that. No matter how well meaning that you may be. Again. There's no suspects in custody yet. But I'm willing to guarantee you. It was the hands of another black man. I'm going to bet you my life. So with that being said, this is the aftermath. It's the aftermath of everything that is going on prior. I don't know which one is worse. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. Come on back to the mental house. With that being said, if you like what you hear, please like, please subscribe, please share. And be blessed.